Hi guys, today is a project, a sewing project. Um, I have these pillows in my living room. They're like small little throw pillows. And I've been just upcycling, putting new covers on them. Today I want to make like a sham cover so I can maybe take it off. These were like, I think this was like a shower curtain and old sheet and I just used them to cover these. Um, today I'm going to make a sham and I have this burlap that I thrifted. Um, it's going to be basically a pillow but then on the front I want it over top of the burlap to have a layer of this which is like a crocheted um, tablecloth that I was gifted. These aren't really... I, I can't imagine putting this on a table right now anymore. Especially with kids and eating and my table is this more functional. I mean, it, it, my table isn't pretty. But like, I just can't imagine cleaning this. I don't know, I would much rather have it on a pillow. So we're gonna cut this. This is gonna be the decorative part of the front of that pillowcase. And it's gonna have this. So we basically need two squares of the burlap and one square of this that I'm gonna be cutting out. And the back square is gonna be cut in half and seamed so that we can use it as a sham to put the pillow into like an envelope. I have my pinking shears, I believe they're called, because I'm sure all of this is gonna run. We're gonna sew it really quick because I don't want this coming unraveled and I know this comes unraveled. So we're gonna cut it, sew it, put it on the pillows and see how it goes. I've made so many pillows before. Um, that's like the first thing I learned how to sew on my sewing machine. So, but a sham is a little bit more because you're not like just stitching it shut. So it should work out well. Let's do it. All right guys, so first thing I'm gonna do is measure. I'm just gonna use my old pillow here. Leaving a little room for seam allowance. I'm just going to go for it. Cutting out the square. So here's the pillow. And here's my first square. A little uneven, but it's okay. One, two. Got my two squares of the burlap. We're gonna go one together. These are not, <laughs> the burlap is already wonky and they're just not gonna be even, but I still think it'll work out all right. Fake it till you make it, you know my motto. And then I'm gonna cut out the one square of the um, the other fabric. The tablecloth. Um, I kind of want to, before I cut that though, I want to look at this because one of these is going to get cut in half and then hemmed right down the middle. So we're just going to go, I'm going for that. Cutting this one down the middle. gonna hem it because these will go on the inside to help me get like the envelope feel. There's that. Now let's get this guy which I'm nervous to cut guys. Someone made this 
and it's beautiful. Oh look, but I found a beautiful, perfect corner to use. I knew there was a corner in this wasn't a round tablecloth. That makes it so much easier. So, let's see. Just match up that pillow. go. Nervous. Some people might be crying with this hard work, but I think it would be more sad if it got thrown away and not used giving away and put in a landfill so now it's gonna sit on my sofa and look pretty so don't cry all right wow that's wonky <laughs> all right so that is gonna get sewed on top of this and that's what the pillow is gonna be like the burlap with that lacy top I love it All right, so we're gonna sew this piece to this piece as the back. First, I'm gonna do the seams of these. So let me get my sewing machine up here. Put this to the side. All right, guys. So first I'm gonna show the, sew the back of it, the sham part. I'm wondering if I'm gonna have to add like a button or something to keep it closed, but hopefully not. Now you can see me and the sewing machine. I got you back farther. Hopefully the light's good. So we have our two smaller rectangles that I cut that square in half, and I'm going to cut them, or um, sew, I'm just gonna fold it over and then over on itself and make a little hem. I'm not doing any um, pinning or anything, just two little folds, pinching it down. And I think I'm gonna do a zigzag stitch on this because it is the burlap and it's so unravelly. We're gonna do this. All right, where's my pet? Here's my two pieces. They are gonna go together like this so that the pillow can like go in in that little fold in the middle. I will show you. Let me get the other bit. So here we have our other two squares that we cut. The pretty pillow piece. And let me push this over so you guys can see what I'm doing here. So, we got our burlap, pretty crocheted um, tabletop, tablecloth piece. And fitting that onto there. Then we have our backing. So that will go on one, and this will go on the other. I feel like I should pin this one, but we're <laughs> kidding. I am not going. Maybe I will, so it won't come undone. 
they're kind of these two are overlapping i should have made that one piece a little bit bigger but it works so let me get my pin sometimes it just makes things nicer and neater so i'm just going to pin around the edge Pull the sewing machine back over here. And I'm just going to start at the seam. Get both of them attached quick. I want to make sure you have all three layers there the, the bottom burlap, the crocheted piece, and then the top burlap with its two pieces. And put the foot down, put the needle in, and I'll sew some first, and then we'll see. I can give you guys a closer look. Here we go. I can just sew right over the pins. It's not always good if you hit a pin, but usually you can go right over them and it'll be okay. Alright, since I went all around with the zigzag, I'm going to go switch it to a straight stitch and go all the way around with a straight stitch again. Alright, let's see how this baby came out. I think it's going to be a little funky because I'm going to tell you what, <laughs> I don't know if you can see how funky that looks, but it's definitely not straight. Let me take these pins out. And then we'll, we'll cut off some of these edges a little bit, I think, because they're raggy. They're going to be the inside. The pin tomato is directly below the microphone. I wonder if you guys can hear me stabbing the pins back in. That'd be pretty cool. The stitch is, let's see, probably here you can see. The stitch is here, and I want to cut some of this. There's this not using the pinking shears this time, just my straight scissors. Pinking shears kind of give it a kind of zigzag edge, which helps when you're sewing fabric for some things to keep from getting unraveled. So now that I have all the funky edges cut off, you can probably see how really uneven. So this I think it's going to be cute. This is just going to be the trial run here. Alright, so here's that strap. Get that over here. Get out the way, and you can see <laughs> look how uneven it is. It's so uneven. Now I'm going to inside it out. Or right side it out. Outside it in. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know which way you call it, but definitely gonna need to add like a button or something to secure the part where the pillow goes, I think. But guys. Oh, I think it's gonna be cute. Let's see. Will it work? Is this one too wonky? Fit one of my pillows. So you can see the big gaping back where I need to add like a little button which I will do that I'll show you but look at the front it's not square but it's cute I'm gonna have to cut more equal even because look you can see how unsquared and uneven it is so I'm going to break up my ruler and I'm going to do it again and I'll be more square that time. And also I'm going to add like a little button onto here.
Alright y'all, I'm gonna be brave and use my buttonhole um, maker on my machine. But I'm gonna take off the regular foot, which is this guy. Put on the button foot, which I clamp it onto this, there's like a bar. And I, it goes this way. Because I need those lines. So I'm gonna put that button foot on. Just lower the foot to help me. Um, I'm not quite sure where the thread goes for this, but I'm thinking in. That's the bottom thread. Here is the button thread. Okay. So we're in. So I'm going to make it match. I think right there is probably where I want it. So let's take off. Let's do my wonky pillow first, y'all. I'm holding up my button here, and I need it to fit into that hole. So... I believe that is where it should be so it'll fit all right then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do number one these red ones are the buttons so it's first it's gonna stitch on that side then I'll switch it to two then I'll switch it to three then I'll switch it back to four and that's all it should do it should go down 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 all right so let's All right, y'all. I don't know if I did that right. Let's check. Well, that's how it came out. I don't, I think I pulled the four and one, no, the three and one too fast because they're not very long. But let's see. Cutting the stitches. Oh, God. This is a mess. Look at that, guys. I don't know. Obviously, I need some practice. But this was some good first practice. Let's see. The button fits through the hole. That's a plus. I'm going to cut off all these little strings and sew the button and see how it comes out. There's no magical way to uh, sew the button with my machine. I just got to do that the old-fashioned way. So, we just going to get it. I'm sure all you wonderful seamstresses have like, oh, you gotta sew in this hole and that hole and that hole and that's how you do it. That's the only way you do it. Girls, I just get it. <laughs> the button is attached. Perfection is, can do a lot of things for us, but when I do things imperfect, I get so much more done, y'all. I'm not gonna lie. This guy in here. Button her up. Wonky pillow number one has its button. Not beautiful, but it works. So So there's the back of that. Here's the front. That still looks good. We fixed it. It's looking good. Thanks for watching and hanging there with the guy, me guys. Um, <laughs> trial and error. Denial and error. I don't know what you want to call it, but 
We made some pillowcases today. 